So, we're going to start part two. Um, before we start the official part two, which is down here, I just want to do one of these real quick. We went over a homework question like it, we have to factor a couple times. But, you know what, let's do number two. Would you rather do four? Yes. They're all very relatively yeah. easy, actually. Yeah. Right. Whichever one you pick, Mr. G. Okay. Roll the die. Actually, no. You know what? Let's do four because I know what people are, are going to mess up. See? That's a good one to do. Um, we can't really factor it, but we can certainly get tangent alone. So we have tangent squared x equals 3. I don't want that square in there, so we square root both sides. So then we get tangent of x equals plus or minus square root of 3. Good. It's the same thing. They're synonyms. 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 Plus or minus is shorter, and I'm lazy, so. Math and science people are always lazy. They're always looking for shortcuts. Okay. Why is it bad when we're lazy? Oh, gosh. That's different. We still do our work. We just figure out a way to do it without doing more than we need to. Okay? All right, so for this one, the tangent can either be positive or negative, so that means every quadrant, right? Because the, tangents, the tangent will be positive in quadrants 1 and 2, and negative in quadrants, two, uh, I'm sorry, positive in quadrants 1 and 3, negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So then our job is basically, let's just find this first one. It says degrees, right? Um, what coordinates do we need, let's see, to get a root 3 tangent value? One half root 3. Very good. What degree measure is that? 60. Very good. So if this is 60, then we have 60. What's this one over here? 240, 300, okay, so since we're doing all solutions, okay, we don't want to just list 60, 120, 240, 300, that would be okay if it was like only from 0 to 360. How far apart are 60 and 240? So we can say x equals 60 degrees plus 180k. And that will get us from 60 to 240, back to the first quadrant if I keep adding 180, right? Yeah, and then also 120 plus 180 degrees K, where K is any integer. Okay. Let's go on to part two then. Wait, we need to write both of the answers or just one? You need to write both. Because if you just write that, that only talks about this angle, that angle, this angle. You're skipping half of the solutions. Okay. Jack? So, I'm sure it's because of the plus or minus, but you cannot say 60 plus 60. Oh, actually, uh, 60 would get you to 120, but then if you added 60 to that, where does it, where does it get you? 180. So 180 doesn't work. So I like that you're looking for that less writing shortcut. But that's the angle that has a tangent of root 3. 
Well, you're, you're supposed to know that off the top of your head. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least know what ordered pair gives you that tangent. And if you know that tangent's y over x, then the y has to have the root 3 in it. Yeah? Could you do 60 plus um, 60k and then somehow exclude the circle? No, it's not. I mean, they have to be perfectly spaced they apart. Be if you didn't multiply by any number of them. Like 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. If you did, yeah. So you want to say 60 degrees plus 180 degrees K, where K is any integer, except where K is a multiple of 3. Yeah. I guess you can do that. How would you write it? Exactly the way we just said it. <laughs> It's actually more writing, but... Okay, go on to part two. Okay. Now we have two things we want to compare. Y equals sine X, which goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then, do you guys remember what happens if the 2 is in here in front of the x? What does that change? Uh, the period. The, period the, the period. What is the new period? Pi. So 2 pi over pi, uh, 2 is pi. So then from 0 to pi would be 1 period. And then if I went all the way to 2 pi, that just means there's 2 of them. So what does that mean? If we're going from 0 to 2 pi, and we want to figure out when it hits 1 half, or whatever, the green one would only be twice, but the red one would be four, four times. Okay, so if this coefficient goes up, there's going to be more answers, more times, when it hits those trig values that we need. Okay, so we could have Erica text her friend uh, to help us with part B. Well, we don't know how to do part A. We know, we know how to do that. That's from before. But we know what we can do them both. So we're looking for this, okay? My advice, whenever we have double, triple, or half, or quadruple angles, for these kinds of questions, first, I want you to find all solutions, okay? Find all solutions. Even if it doesn't ask us to, if you find all solutions, it'll tell you how to find what you need to find, okay? So for instance, um, where is the sign zero? Uh, here and here, right? So we would say x equals zero, and since these are perfectly spaced apart, how far apart are they? So we want radians, though. So plus pi k, right? Now, even though we didn't have to do this problem this way, because we know the answers are just 0 and pi, okay? You can use this equation to find your answers. Because this just tells you the pattern. It tells you what each angle is increasing by, right? So if we start at 0... To get the next angle, we add pi, so we get pi. If we wanted to get more angles, we would add pi again, so the next angle would be 2 pi. But we know we don't include 2 pi because it's an open parentheses there at the end, right? So then these are the only two answers. Now, using the same idea over here, the only thing that changes now is the angle. Here, our angle was x, right? Our angle is not x anymore. Here it's 2x. So when you solve this equation, instead of writing x equals 0 plus pi k, you're going to write whatever angle is in the parentheses here, which in this case is 2x equals 0 plus pi k. And then, yes, if we're looking for x... We take this equation, 
divide by two. So now we get x equals zero plus pi over two k, where k is, I mean, where k is any integer. That's the entire solution set. But now we can use this if we want to list answers from zero to pi, because this tells us what to do. What's the first angle? Zero. And then I add pi over two, and I get <coughs> pi over two. I add pi over two again. Two pi over two is pi. Add pi to that, pi over two to that. Three pi over two. And if we add pi over two again, we end up at two pi, and that's too big. So here are the four solutions for part B. So do you guys kind of see the, the concept there of if you find all the solutions and write them out, then you can just use this pattern to generate however many answers you need. Yes? So the answer's like the stuff in the box, not the yes. pattern, right? Right. This, if this had said to find all solutions, then this would actually be the answer. Okay. Because this is a way of saying what all the solutions are. But since it's asking us to list, we're using this all solutions pattern thing to just kind of list out as many as we need. Does that make sense? Because pi over 2 has a sign of 1. Okay. All right. Let's go on to... Next page, let's try this one right here, where it's cosine 3x equals 1 half. Okay, so this is a multiple angle, right? It's not just x. So when we figure out what angles have a 1 half cosine, we're not going to say x equals, we're going to say 3x equals, okay? So cosine will be positive 1 half in the first quadrant and also in the second quadrant. Fourth quadrant. Or fourth, thank you. Man, I'm messing those up. Drew it right, said it wrong. Thank you. What angle is this that has an x or a cosine of 1 half? 60 degrees. So what would this have to be then? 300, good. There is no nice pattern to get from here to here and then back to the same position, right? So if we're gonna write all the solutions, we have to do one at a time like we did yesterday. So we do 60 degrees plus, so if I wanna end up back here again, what do I add? 360, good. And I'm going to use this to divide by 3 to actually figure out what's going on with x. So if I take x, divide the right side by 3, 60 over 3 is 20 degrees. 360 degrees divided by 3 is 120. So then this describes half of our answers. Let's do the other one. Uh, this was 300, right? So on this equation, we get what? 100 plus 100 degrees K. Okay, so if, if the problem asked to list all solutions, this is all of them. You guys understand that? But we're actually listing our answers from 0 to 360. So here's how we do that. Take the first equation. What do we start with? If we don't simplify it, it's wrong. If we leave it as 3x. Yes, because we're looking for x. What's the first angle here that works? 20. What's the pattern? We're adding 120 each time. So if we add 120, that's 140. The next one would be 260. The next one would be 380. That's way too big, right? So we don't include it. Let's do that same thing here. So x is going to be 100 plus a tw 120 is 220, plus a 200 is 
plus 120 is 340. And if I go one more time, it's too big. So these are the six angles specifically from 0 to 360 that'll work. Yes? Can you just list them all under x angles? Because yeah. Why do you have two different angles? I don't know. You can list them once. So 220, 140. Yes. So you guys see the difference. This is listing what works. This over here would be saying all solutions. Does that make sense? So just follow the directions. Yeah, so anytime they ask you to list, right, we're listing angles from 0 to 360, then your answer should be a list of numbers or angles. Why does if it said, like, for here, where it said, um... Why does it say make a substitution? Don't worry about it. I'm teaching it different this year. Well, do you guys understand what we just did? Yes. Yeah. Then let's keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, be quiet, Lee.